Welcome to another episode of Remember the Great Sports Autograph Tips and Discussions. Today, I'm going to share with you my through the mail and in person cards that I send out to get autographed and how I store them. Now, this is a project that I've had going on since the mid 90s. Many of you who have come to my channel know that I've been collecting autographs, whether it's in person or through the mail, since my teenage years, and that was in the mid-1990s. So I've amassed quite a collection of autographs in my collection, and I just wanted to share with you some tips maybe of how you can organize your cards to have your cards ready to go whenever you need them to send out through the mail or see somebody in person. So. I'm going to have to zoom out because I'm going to show you a big box here, so just bear with me with the camera work. Alright, so as you can see, this is a 5,000 count box that I have in my collection, and I keep this in my, in my room, and anytime I need, I need to get a player's cards, I go to this box and I simply name it Baseball Alpha, okay, alphabetical. I guess I could write it all out, but I guess I was just too lazy to do that. But as you can see, this is an old box. I got tape on it. It's all worn and everything like that. And, you know, the corner's kind of messed up here on this, one, on this side. Well, the reason for that is I've had this box since the 1990s. This 5,000 count box has been in my collection for that long for over 25 years and you look at this and you're like, ah, oh, that's all junk wax era crap, blah, blah, blah. And I'm going to agree with you. Most of it is, but what this, these four rows, why that's important is these cards are alphabetized by player. And this is my recommendation. If you have the time to do this and being with so much downtime lately, having to be stuck at home, I decided to sit down and update my alphabet bet list. I have a lot of cards laying around in my collection, and this is just the original box. I always go here. If, for example, I need to find a card of somebody really fast, I go right to this box. If I don't have them here, then I go elsewhere in my collection to look for them. So I'm just going to kind of show you what I've done and why this box is so sentimental to me is my father and I actually put this box together when I was a teenager. And I remember laying on the living room floor with my dad. We didn't have a table. I don't know why we didn't use a table. But I remember sitting on the living room floor with my dad. He was sitting in his chair and we would sort through my cards. And this is circa, you know, 19, you know, late 70s all the way to the mid 90s and we put everybody by player. So that was the start of this box. And my dad helped me put this together and this thing has moved with me so many times throughout the years and I still go back to this box every, every time, not every time, but when I know I need to pull somebody out, I go here first. So these first four rows we're gonna talk about. This last row I'll talk about when I get to it, but this is the alphabet starting with A. And what I tried to do, we'll start with the very first card, and it shouldn't come to a surprise to you, is a Hank Aaron card. Now, Hank Aaron, obviously, I tried to put a Hall of Famer, and this is living Hall of Famers at the time. I tried to put a living Hall of Famer in this box, you know, so there'll be a Willie Mays in here. But they're not going to be like vintage cards are going to be like these, you know, Kmart cards, the Ted Williams collection, you know, 54 archives maybe snuck in there. But obviously, the start of my alphabet, I got to have a Hank Aaron in there. And you can kind of see, I'm just going to flip through these. I'm not going to name names, but, you know, Doyle Alexander, Richie Allen, Bill Allman, who is an awesome through the mail signer. And I just organized these. There's all the Alus. Philippe Alou, Jesus Alou, there's Sparky Anderson and Art Howe, so technically those shouldn't be there, they should be under Art Howe, because Sparky Anderson passed away. I, I want, also want to mention there's Tony Armas Sr., as you can see I got a ton of him, 
Jack Armstrong, there's only one. Alan Ashby. And again, these are Andy Ashby. These are all players that were known signers or they were Hall of Famer or star types. You know, like for example, there'll be a Dwight Gooden in here just so I had a Dwight Gooden if I ever needed it really fast. You know, Daryl Strawberry, Eric Davis, on down the list. Ruben Sierra, all those 80s, 90s stars. So that way, if I ever saw them in person or they decided they wanted to sign through the mail all of a sudden, all I got to do is go to this box. So I'm just going to skip down the list here. These are all the A's. Hopefully you can still see that, not too blurry. Um, you know, there's Steve Bedrosian. You know, there's a Johnny Bench. And again, it's a, you know, it's a reprint. But I just wanted to share these with you guys. There's Paul Blair on a Ted Williams card collection. I just wanted to share all these with you to kind of show you how I organize for my TTMs. A lot of people say, geez, I don't even know where to start. I don't even know where to go. Well, one of my recommendations is, is you know, just put a box together like this. And you may not have a 5,000 count box or need a 5,000 count box, but to just alphabetize two, three, four cards of the guys in your collection, just say, oh, you know, I want to write Greg Brock. He was one of my favorite players. And speaking of Brock, there's a Lou Brock. And again, Lou Brock doesn't sign through the mail, but when I put this box together, I thought, well, you need to have a Hall of Famer for everybody in this box. So one of the things that I did with the downtime being home, you know, with the virus and everything, I decided I'm going to update this box. This box hasn't been updated in years. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through here and I'm going to add cards alphabetically to this list. But I'm also going to take guys out. And you're going to be like, well, why would you take them out? Well, whenever a player passes away, this box, I don't keep them in anymore. I, I'm not trying to sound cynical or anything like that, but this box is stri strictly for autographs. And if somebody passes away, obviously they don't need to be in this box because I'm not getting their card signed anymore. So I completely just take them out of this alphabetical list and I move them to a completely separate box. Um, here's Tom Bernanski. You know, he's, he's a great signer. So, you know, Brett Butler. I'm, uh, as you can tell, I'm just getting to the C's now. Chris Chambliss, Dave Concepcion, Cecil Cooper, on down the list, Glenn Davis. I, I don't think he signs to the mail, but I have some cards. And again, these were guys that were stars in the 80s and 90s, Jim Deshays. Doug DeCensus, Dave Dervecki, who's a pretty good signer. So that is my A's. So as you can tell, actually that was A through D, Lenny Dykstra being the last one. So another thing that I use these for is in-person autographs. I bring up Lenny Dykstra, for example, because his son a couple years ago was playing minor league baseball. Now I thought it to be a long shot, but Whenever I went to a game where her son was at, I made sure that I brought a couple of these cards with me, just in case. You just never know. Well, it didn't work out. I never met Lenny. So I just put them right back in my box after I was done seeing the player. As you can see, we start with Easler, Mike Easler, and E right there. And there's some Dennis, uh, kind of working around my camera here. Here's some Dennis Eckersley's. You know, Hall of Famer again, Mark, oop. Mark Eckhorn, who's a great through the mail signer. Jim Eisenreich, who's kind of hot and cold about signing. Roger Erickson signs. Nick Asaski, he doesn't really sign through the mail anymore. There's some Daryl Evans. I, I've gotten Daryl Evans multiple times. That's why there's only a couple in here. I, I cleaned out my box. There's Dwight Evans. If I ever were to see him, I'd know where to go. And you can just kind of understand where I go with this. And this, this took a long time to put this box together, as you can imagine. And it's always a work in progress. I always have stuff to add to it. There's Brian Harvey, who's a great signer through the mail usually. You know, and there's, there's guys that don't sign through the mail. But I like to keep them in here just in case. You know, just in case I happen to go to a card show or, you know, something like Willie Horton, for example. Here, I would love to get Willie Horton's autograph someday, but it's it's turning out that it's just easier to go get it off the internet or something. Uh, here's 
Jack Howell, who was a coach in the minor leagues that I saw recently. Pete Incavelia, who signed for me in person before. But like I said, if I was going to a game and I knew Pete Incavelia was going to be there, I'd just come and go right to this box. Ferguson Jenkins, who I've seen a couple times in person. He's done various signings. I come to this box and, you know, so on and so forth. So there's the Jays. And I'm not going to go through this because you kind of get the idea of what I'm doing. You know, we're over 11 minutes, but here's some Sparky Lyles. Yeah, this goes back to the discussion of a player that uh, his son played, Chuck McElroy. I, I, I used to go to games where his son CJ was playing, and I always used to carry this this pack of cards with me. I just shoved a bunch in a penny sleeve and always had them on me just in case, but it never worked out. Jack Morris, Jamie Moyer. I haven't written Jamie Moyer in a long time. Dave Parker. Larry Parrish. So you kind of get the idea. And this goes all the way to the end here to Z. So, so A over here in this corner and Z all the way back here. And that is Pat Zachary is the last entry into this box. So you're looking at this, this corner over here and you're like, well, you got room for more if you need to. And I, and I agree, but this is kind of my to-do pile so to speak. This, you might recognize, these are some senior league cards. I just haven't filed them away. It's a team set, so I just shoved it in there. You know, here's some Diamond King checklists. But more importantly, the first half of this, and I have a divider here, is these are all kind of like vintage cards that I just haven't put where they need to go. You know, like there's a Jim Cott, you know, oldie, you know, there's a Cesar Tovar. They're kind of like late 60s, Rick Wise. Late 60s, early 70s. You know, there might be a few. You know, there's another Willie Horton since I just had him pulled out. So these are actually like vintage cards, you know, not the Ted Williams stuff. But the back of this row, there's some Tombstone Pizza cards, if you guys remember those. And there's a open box or open set of playing cards. You know, the playing cards, you know how I like collecting my baseball aces. So if I know somebody's in that set, I just pull it out of there because that's a partial set. And the rest of this row is basically stuff that needs to be put away. I haven't yet filed them where they need to go. You know, there's like a John Crook or some, there's a Brett Butler. They just haven't been alphabetized yet. Vance Law, Jeff Burroughs. Bob Tewksbury, and so on and so forth. So if I can't find a card here, then I go here. Well, just hang on a second. Also an item from the circuit 1990s, early 2000s is this box. And this is a shoe box full of cards. Now I talked about the players that have passed away. That's what these are. So either they've passed away or they no longer can sign. Uh, that's Del Crandall's case. He no longer signs. That's an old golf set. But if I can't find a card of somebody in this box, I go to this box. And this box is not alphabetized. This is just more 90s, 80s fluff stuff from that era. So say for example, I go to my box and I can't find a Tommy John card. I go in here and I look for Tommy John because I know he's probably in here. So that's that's my three my through the mail autographs this is where primarily they come from whenever you see one of my ttm thursday videos odds are the cards came out of this box at one point or another now to talk about my vintage cards that's a whole nother box and a whole nother story so this is mainly like i said the 80s 90s even some 70s stuff players that are known signers, players that are stars, and of course I try to keep a living Hall of Famer in here. Jim Rice, for example, if I ever were to see Jim Rice, I would go to this box and pull Jim Rice up. So, hope you guys enjoyed this. Again, this is just a recommendation on my part to maybe get yourself organized with all the downtime now with the virus. Might be a perfect time to build yourself a box like this. Hope this 
help you guys in the direction of collecting autographs through the mail. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to ask me down below. Thanks.